Hi all, welcome to Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. I'm Angela and that's my bestie, Leslie. We are two free thinking 60 something year old women and we invite you to think deeply and act boldly. So if you are an inquisitive older woman or if you love one or if you wanna become one, please hang with us for a little bit and you'll be glad you did. Please also take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you'll be notified when we post new content. Okay, Is I'll it? wait. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in a hurry. <laughs> and when you do that, you'll encourage YouTube to share us with others. I think you'll awesome. be happy that they do. Awesome, okay, so listen. Lots going on, and you know, Leslie and I always have like a a little a different take on certain things that are happening in the news. So we wanted mm -hmm. to tell you about a um, YouTube video that we saw recently. It yeah. is on um, Roland S. Martin's channel. It's um, called Roland Rips NABJ Leaders for Inviting Trump to Speak. Right, so NABJ, the National National Association of Black Journalists, mm -hmm. and as you probably know by now, um, they invited um, former President um, Trump to come and speak at their convention mm -hmm. in and, Chicago. Oh, it was it was it. Well, it was very controversial before <laughs> very controversial, it even happened. To say the and least. The, and the controversy didn't end what, after it happened. Correct. Correct. So we're not going to go through all of the ins and outs because um, most of you have probably seen it. But we wanted to point out three things that we'd like you to think a little more deeply about. And of course, I wrote them down because if you know me, I meander a lot, so it helps me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> helps no. Me <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Never. Okay. The first thing we want to talk about is how Black excellence showed up um, during that interview and all the kind of planning around it. We want to talk about how the patriarchy showed up, and we want to talk about how classism showed up, right? Mm -hmm. So these are the things that... Um, we, we um, you know, we just thought it would um, allow you to think a little bit more deeply than what you typically hear when mm -hmm. you hear about the controversy of, of this meeting. Um, so the first thing, and if you know anything about Leslie and I, we have challenged the notion of Black excellence for a while. I think I might have convinced Leslie <laughs> at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Black excellence idea, that whole trope and mean. Yeah, we, we're just not fans anymore. And maybe it's because we're on the other side of it and we're at the age now where we are um, less concerned about, you know, the pressures of what other people think of us and kind of playing by the rules and things like that. Um, and but not just that, we're mm -hmm. not magical people that we have to be a credit to our race or we have to be better than everyone else. We're human beings with the same abilities and inabilities that others have. Exactly. So we still love uh, Michelle Obama. <laughs> However, her husband too. And her husband. Mm -hmm. However, the when they go low, we go high. Um, in context, but we think that in this case, um, having the former president on this stage was probably, and the way that the, 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 the journalists kind of managed or mismanaged him probably wasn't the best time to try to go high because he's such a low roller. He is such a low roller and we just kind of felt that um, maybe they were um, trying too hard to be civil, um, or maybe they were 
um, trying too hard to think that there was kind of some false equivalence. Okay, he's a former president, he should be on. But he's a lot of other things too. He is um, a convicted felon. He is a, um, a, a convicted um, sexual offender. He is all these and things. And admitted sexual offender. And admitted. A self-admitted sexual offender. All of these things. And so the rules, I, I don't know, Les. I the don't think the rules should apply The rules that govern professional interactions right. Right. don't necessarily apply to him because he does not follow those rules. So right. I think that they should not have expected anyone other than Trump to present himself at that interview. Up. Yeah. Right. And and by by um expecting him to be who he always shows up as mm -hmm. we would have um, they should have been better prepared for his types of answers. They should have been better prepared with fact checking on the spot. Not that people could go to, go a, website to a website and do mm -hmm. fact checking, um, because it literally gave him a platform for espousing so many lies that he is used to telling. And so without that fact checking, um, it just became another platform for him, which which I think is unfortunate. And 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 I think in a typical debate setting, I'm not really sure how practical it is to fact check someone who says so many things that are not true. Mm -hmm. As a result, I'm not sure if he's ever would be a good if he would ever be a good candidate for a debate or a question and answer session like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's it makes it difficult because if he's a candidate and he's running for office, one would think that you would be able to sit in a, a forum with him in a civil way and get right. him to answer questions in a way that's professional. And I think his approach was really unprofessional, albeit typical of his him. Right. Right. So um, you know, I, I'm I'm sure that there were a lot of uh discussions and debates and so on about whether he should have been there in the first place. Um, but if the decision was that he be allowed to be there, um, we think that just the desire for um, a black excellence, the desire for us to show up as um, uh, extremely fair, extremely balanced, extremely um, mm. all of those things, it allowed a serial liar to have a platform. Yeah. So that's how we saw Black Excellence showing up here. Anything yeah. else you wanted to add to that, Les? The only other thing I wanted to um, clarify a little bit was why uh, many people thought it was not a good idea for an organization such as the Black Journalists who mm. Ha, um, have a conversation with this person in general. It's mm -hmm. because former President Trump has shown um, for years, has shown a disdain and disrespect toward Black journalists in particular. Mm -hmm. um, he has attacked on more than one occasion April Ryan, and he has attacked publicly um, Al Cinder. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And other journalists, he's, you know, he and has an- And the way he spoke to, to um, uh, I forget her name, the first person who interviewed, mm. who asked him the question on stage. I mean, he talked about her being nasty. I I, I thought that was pretty nasty. Yeah, okay, so I also. think that his interaction with this particular group of professionals has never been professional. And right. as a result, right. I don't see why um, they would allow him airtime in that regard because right. this yeah. was this is this was their conference this wasn't like a tv show a national or, forum or exactly. a, a, this it was, was a conference. public it, it was their annual conference okay. where other presidents in the past and other candidates have appeared and spoken okay so that's how we saw black excellence showing up and again mm, uh, uh, not the time and the place. Not, not the time and the place. <laughs> um, the second thing we wanted to bring up is how the patriarchy showed up. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is um, this idea of the strong man, 
right? The, the, the political strongman, which typically shows up in um, fascist societies. Think Mussolini, think um, Adolf Hitler, think, um, uh, um, what's the guy who just won in- um, Maduro in Maduro. Venezuela. Right, um, so, um, and many others. So this idea that the strong man is gonna save you because the world is so bad, you need someone strong. So you're willing to tolerate um, militarism. You're willing to tolerate um, nationalism just, just and nationalism and um, and a suppression of rights and a, suppr a suppression of free speech and all of that. You're willing to tolerate it because mm -hmm. the world has gotten so bad. You need someone someone like, that. like this. You need someone like that. So these people who kind of like authoritarian governments, and you know, I'm from the West Indies. I think that that shows up in so much of the culture in my home country of Jamaica, in, mm -hmm. in churches, for example. Um, this idea that someone like that We need like a leader to govern need. because, right, we are not able to do it for ourselves and exactly. then they uh, uh, protect us from outside uh, forces. Exactly. You know? So it's not because these people who want these leaders are evil or, um, you know, uh, mistaken or anything like that. I don't think it's that at all. I think it's because they have been convinced that the world is so bad that this leader is who they need to protect them and to protect the things that had been theirs, right? So that's why white nationalists would, would like a leader like him because they believe that um, everyone other than them are going to are trying to take what is rightfully theirs. theirs. And so the strongman leader, the patriarchy, that is what we need. So we're willing to tolerate. Yeah, a lot it's of okay bullshit. that we can give up some of our hard fought freedoms. Yeah. Because yeah. The, the risk of loss is so great, for example. Exactly. And that's why in this particular video, they spent uh, considerable time talking about the immigrants coming in to take, in particular, Black jobs. I don't know what they particular. I still don't know what he means when he says black <laughs> jobs. I've never had any problems as uh, with an immigrant taking my job as an anesthesiologist. I'm a or black. That's jobs. my black job, <laughs> <laughs> and I just I haven't seen it. It's not a problem that I'm worried about. Right. But right. Um, but again, when you present it as these people are so bad and they're taking from us, and you need me, the savior. Yeah. And so Leslie kind of went into the third topic a little bit, and that is classism, how we saw classism showing mm. up in this conversation around the way that we think about immigrants, right? If you remember, um, when um, formerly enslaved people in America were um, emancipated, and started to establish their own communities, their own um, their own peaceful existence without mm -hmm. having the yoke of chattel slavery upon them. Mm -hmm. That is when a lot of what they call quote unquote race riots, which wasn't really race riots. Those are white people um, attacking black communities and black people because they were feeling like these people are taking our our jobs our um our mm -hmm. industries our land and all of that mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. me it's the same thing it's the same idea that um immigrants are coming here to take something so i know that as black people i'm gonna say this sometimes it's hard for us to see that we do to to others what we um, abhor when people do to us. I think that's one of those things. I think it's easy mm -hmm. for some people to see immigrants as taking something that is ours, when in fact, we should not be fighting for crumbs. Why are we fighting mm -hmm. for the least amount? Why aren't we fighting for what the top has instead of scrambling around and fighting with these poor refugees who are trying to do nothing more 
than to protect themselves and their families. Remember, Jesus was a refugee. Anyway, um, why are we fighting, some of us are fighting against them when we, we're, we're, not willing, we're not willing to go to California in the sun and, and, and pick fruits and vegetables. We're not willing to do a lot of things that we hear, oh, they're taking away black jobs. No, they're not. No, so, they're not. So black people should side with us against those people. Well, if the country sided against those people, we would have no f in uh, agricultural system. The stores would be empty. And many of the other things that we enjoy as Americans, the system would not exist anymore. Right. And, and, I, and I'm not built for for, for <laughs> bullet picking uh, oranges. And let me California. let me just be clear. I want to make something clear. When we're talking about these types of manual labor jobs, we're not saying that those are the jobs that immigrants have. We're saying that new immigrants, people who are trying to find their way, like my mother, well-educated, super educated woman before she came to this country. And she had three jobs, one of which was on the weekends, she would go to the wealthy white um, neighborhoods up, upstate and she would do domestic work on the weekends, right? Mm. So it doesn't mean that these people are not well-educated, that they don't have the skills. And or if they're criminals, here is a lady it, with uh, an advanced like master's degree who went and cleaned house because that's what yeah, you do. Because you that's work what you hard. do. Exactly. You work hard. And that's the, that's the point. This way of looking at, um, at, at, at class, right? It, it is such a divisive that's thing what that it we is. could really, that's we what could it really is. Turn around. Yes. And I want to mention one other thing, if I may. So, um, Fred Hampton, one of the, uh, one of the former leaders of the black Panther, um, movement who was murdered by the United States government when he was, I think, 21 or 22. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons that he was so, um, he was considered such a threat yeah. to the American system is because of the Rainbow Coalition that he started, which looked at the class of people, the, the, um, race was less a factor no matter all the stories they tell you about how evil the black panthers were they were a social movement and fred hampton in particular was interested in what poor people regardless of their race, race ethnicity background, background poor people and he was trying to unite poor, poor people. people of all yes Right. Yes. And that is why I think that he was considered to be such a threat because he saw that it wasn't about race. That's not where the fight was. The fight was against mm -hmm. poverty, mm -hmm. against um, having access to social systems that support us, us for, having for access everyone. To... Exactly. So that is where we think classism is showing up. And um, let me see if there's anything else that I wrote down here, because I was hot. I was hot when I was thinking about this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just the idea of divide and conquer is um, what we saw. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say where I saw divide mm -hmm. and conquer show up is. So did you hear how he spoke to that first journalist, how nasty he was to her? Mm. And that's what he does. He'll say he'll say the thing that he is. He'll pin it on. He'll the, on say the, oh. he says that's a nasty, <laughs> nasty question. Or well, that right. is very racist. That, 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 that is. is. So I'm just wondering, why didn't the audience of of um, black journalists why didn't they shut that down when they saw how he was attacking the person who. He was they are to. they are part of the person that yeah. is. Yeah. You know what? I think it almost goes back to the beginning of what you said. When they go low, we go high. <gasps> you know, I almost think it has to do with 
you know how we can get into a conversation about code switching? Yeah. But I think outside of that auditorium, mm. not, not, none of them would have accepted to be spoken to in that way. Right. Oh, Les. And that's if the funny. national cameras were not yes. on, um, I wouldn't great. accept it. I wouldn't accept it in my home. I don't accept it at my right. place of employment. Here, right. these people were doing a job in their profession, yes. in a professional setting yet. And this was right. not a an audience of lay people, you yeah, know, yeah. John Q. Public. This is right. a, these right. were an audience of professional Black journalists right. or right. journalists right. of color. Yeah. So these yeah. people were there in suit and tie and there for what they thought was a professional gathering. Mm -hmm. And it almost turned into this, again, this nasty, mm -hmm. um, it really started out badly from the beginning. Now, from one would say that because former President Trump didn't like the nature of the first question that was yeah. asked. Yeah. Of, of course, it was a tough question. Mm -hmm. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't nasty. Right. It was a real question. Yeah. These are some things that you have said. Yeah. This is what the perception has been. Mm -hmm. How do you address that? Right. Legit right. question. I'm not Legit sure what question. else he expected, uh, what questions he expected. Right. Um, right. Certainly right. not the forum that he's used to at one of his rallies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, National Association of Black Journalists, that should have been a, a, a key for him to know. But I, anyway, I think he used it as a platform to expose his, his, his rancor. Oh, so, um, all right, Les, anything else? I think we're, we're good. We covered, yeah. we came, we saw, we, we conquered. We spoke about it. <laughs> <laughs> we came, we saw, we commented. <laughs> We came, we saw, we commented. By the way, let's change that from John Q. Public to Jamal Q. Public. Oh, <laughs> a one Q. Public. One Q. Public. It fits. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Thanks. don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and notifications. All right. See you we next time. We appreciate you.